मुझे काफी दफा दावत दी यहाँ आके आप लोगों के साथ अपने थॉट शेयर करने की बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली मसरूफियत की वजह से ट्रैवलिंग की वजह से नहीं हो सका मगर मेरा इनसे वादा था कि जाने से पहले मैं एक दफ़ा जरूर आऊँगा और आई केम टूडे कसाना साहब ने जो आज का टॉपिक था वो ह्यूमैनिटी के ऊपर था एंड इन कंजंक्शन विद दैट इन्होंने मुझे कहा था कि मैं इतदाल पे कुछ बातचीत करूँ जब मेरी कसाना साहब से बात हुई तो इनको मैंने कहा कि जी आई वुड लव टू कम एंड स्पीक बट आई वुड लाइक टू स्पीक इन इंग्लिश तो इन्होंने जी उसकी इजाज़त दी नहीं यहाँ पे हमारे सेशन चलते हैं दोनों इंग्लिश स्वीडिश बल्कि बिल्कुल कहा कि जी आई शुड स्पीक इन इंग्लिश तो विद योर परमिशन आई वुड लाइक टू शेयर माई थाट्स and uh, i will try to be brief because i thought that um, i will have at least about 15 minutes but i'll try to i try to cover it in 15 minutes basically we spoke about humanity and i think one of the most important thing which is found teaches it's itadal literally translated itadal would be moderation the first thing Islam is a religion of peace. It teaches balance and thought in action. It does not condone any form of extremism or fanaticism. In fact, finding the middle path is the general principles of the behavior in, in Islam. If you look at the Quran and the Sunnah. they contain numerous guidelines for steering people away from extreme social and behavioral areas islam endorses socio political and socio economic system that represent a balanced middle ground as a general principle Islam teaches Muslim to search for and and adhere to the middle grounds in every walk of life. Allah says, and I'll quote from Surah Al-Baqarah: "Thus we have made you a moderate nation." The idea of ease and moderation in no way implies a relaxation of Islamic law. nor does it imply that a person is free to follow his own free will and inclinations in either his religion or his general feelings with religion you also have certain duties which you have to perform the most prominent characteristic of the muslim ummah is the way they live their lives and practice their deen in the most moderate and balanced way allah says and i quote, quote from surah al qasas seek with the wealth which allah has bestowed on thee the home of the hereafter no forget thy position in this world so with this we come to the importance of moderation in trying to explain the importance of moderation if you look at all the imams they have quoted numerous examples from the quran from the hadith and from history most quranic verses and ahadith of the prophet tell us to be moderate and balanced i will just mention one hadith over here and this is from imam bukhari Three of the companions of the Holy Prophet came to the house of the Holy Prophet and asked the wives of the Holy Prophet, "Does the Holy Prophet pray all night?" And after getting a response, one of them said that I would like to pray all night. The other said that I will not marry and I will stay away from women throughout my life. Upon hearing these comments. 
the holy prophet said, and I quote, Are you the ones who said such things? By Allah, I fear Allah more than you do, and I am most obedient and dutiful among you to him. But still I fast, and I don't fast. I pray at night, and I also sleep. And I am married, and whosoever does not follow my sunnah does not belong to me. Imam Muslim said, the Prophet warned us by saying, I quote, Ruined are those who insist on hardships in matters of deen, unquote. He repeated this three times. Imam Muslim also said that one of the followers and disciples of the Holy Prophet said, I used to observe prayers with the Prophet and his prayers were of moderate length and his sermon too was moderate in length. Allah says in the Quran, and I quote from Surah Al-Baqarah, Thus we have made you a Wasab nation, that you be witness over mankind, and the messenger Muhammad be a witness over you. I'm trying to link all these things with what Mr. Kasana gave in his presentation earlier on. If you look at the Arab dictionary, the term Basat has three meanings. A, to be moderate, B, to be middle, and C, to be the best. Therefore, when Allah describes the Muslim Ummah as a nation that is Basat, Allah means that we are moderate, we are an Ummah that is in the middle, and that we are the best nation. Now with this concept, I move on to the concept of the individual in application to moderation. And I'll again go back to a, to a hadith where the Prophet asked one of his companions that is it true that you pray all day and stand in prayer all night? The companion replied that it was indeed true. So the holy prophet then said, and I quote, Do not do that. Observe the fast sometimes and also leave it at other times. Stand up for the prayer at night and also sleep at night. Your body has a right over you and your eyes have a right over you and your wife has a right over you. This is, I have quoted from Bukhari, volume 7, Hadith 127. The Prophet said, do good deeds properly, sincerely and moderately. Always adopt a middle, moderate, regular course whereby you will reach your target. Obviously the target means paradise. And this is again quoted from Al-Bukhari, volume 8, Hadith 470. The Prophet said, the good deeds of any person will not, will not make him enter paradise. On this, his companions asked, not even you, the Prophet replied, not even myself, unless Allah bestows his favor and mercy on me. So be moderate in your religious deeds and do what is within your ability. None of you should think, should wish of death. For if he is a doer of good, he may increase his good deeds. If he is an evildoer, he may repent to God. And this is quoted from Bukhari, Volume 7, Hadith 577. When we talk about moderation in Islam, there is moderation in everything, also in eating. It's our right to enjoy the good things which God has created in life, the food, the drinks. But Allah says that you must avoid extravagance you must strike a balance 
between extravagance and between self-deprivation because that is the fundamental goal of the Islamic Sharia. Al-Bukhari, I'll quote again, the believer eats in one stomach and the disbeliever eats in seven stomachs. And I'll again quote from Surah Al-Araf, verse 31, and eat and drink, but do not waste extravagantly. Certainly he does not like the Islam. We spoke about human behavior. One of our colleagues over here spoke about the differences between animals and human beings. There is also very clear principles regarding sexuality in Islam. Islam prohibits the two extremes of sexuality. Celibacy and free love, there are no monasteries in Islam. The opposite extreme, sexual looseness, is also prohibited. Fornication, adultery, garner dire punishments. Mr. Kasana has quoted verses from the Quran regarding punishment on adultery. But marriage is the middle ground. It's a sensible and the right place for expression of human sexuality according to our religion. Moderation also is in our personalities. Our religion preaches that a person should avoid extreme strictness or extreme laxity. Likewise, harshness versus sensitivity must be balanced in the middle path. To be cruel to others or one own self is prohibited by Islam. The Prophet said, Shall I inform you who the people of the fire are? They are all those violent, arrogant and stubborn people. However, Islam also discourages being oversensitive. Most of the texts encourage the Muslims to be optimistic. But superficial, superfluous and filth-shrieking behavior is not encouraged. The Prophet said, when you speak to your brother, show him a cheerful face. I'll move on from personality to one of the most important things, which is interpersonal relations. Here even, Islam says, when dealing with others, our manners in Islam disallow both aggressiveness and being passive. Instead of aggression, Islam encourages various alternatives such as patience, tolerance, dialogue and withdrawing oneself from harmful company. The Prophet provided further clarification about verbal argumentation. He said that the person who knows he is right but avoids argumentation by silence is always rewarded by God. A person should not fight simply to have the last word. In terms of emotional commitments, the Prophet said, Do not love your friend excessively. He may one day become your enemy. Do not hate your enemy excessively. He may one day become your friend. Most of the Islamic text encourages the Muslims to be good team players and recognize the value of social networking. Ideally, a Muslim man or woman is someone willing and able to focus on a group goal 
and work together to meet mutual aims. Muslims are also instructed to care about and strive to preserve family ties, recognizing one's right and responsibility, our duties to our mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, and wives. Overall, Islam is a complete code of conduct which preaches us to mold our personalities into well-rounded and positive outlooks, not self-centered or reclusive or overly dependent upon others. As Islam is a complete code of conduct, it also tells us about moderation in personal appearances. Islam instructs us to strike a culturally appropriate balance. I specifically touched upon this thing because we are away from our homes in a foreign country. Culturally appropriate balance between showing off and shabbiness. The principles of moderate physical appearance applies to clothing, transport and housing. The Prophet warned, whoever wears a garment of fame and vanity, God will cloak him in a garment of humiliation on the day of judgment. One factor which drives people into excessive purchasing is competition with the others. Muslims are encouraged to be reasonable in the manner they spend their wealth. The Quran says, I quote, Rivalry in worldly increases distract you until you come to the graves. Nay, you will come to know. Then on that day you will be asked about the pleasures you indulged in. Islamic jurisprudence particularly forbids excessive luxurious household items such as gold-plated silverware. Such decor is wasteful and inconsiderate of the plight of the needy in one's community. Now we talk about wealth and financial management. A Muslim is reminded in the Quran to be generous but not spend thrift. Between these two is a middle path and that is the path of a Muslim. I will quote from Surat Al-Asra, verse 29. And let not your hand be tied to your neck, nor stretch it forth to the utmost reach, so that you become blameworthy and in severe poverty. I will again quote from Surat al Furqan, verse 67. And those who when they spend are neither extravagant nor stingy, but hold a medium between those at the level of society, the general principles, philosophies and systems promoted by the Quran and Sunnah are even-minded and moderate. When you come to international politics, we spoke about humanity and about conquest and about Islam and about protection of the places of non-worshippers. So what does Islam say about international politics? It says international political relations according to Islamic principles should be equitable and diplomatic, neither aggressive nor passive or vulnerable. In line with this, I think Islam encourages military readiness but, but forbids 
transgression, oppression, and initiation of violence. I quote from the Quran, Let not the disbelievers think that they can get the better of the body. The Quran encourages peacefulness and treaty making. Muslim states should not appear downtrodden and defenseless so that the enemies can ravage them. Muslim state, statesperson must carefully consider both the protection and interest of the nations and the rights and humanity of the enemies. Mr. Kasana spoke about, he touched upon a little bit of governance and this is what Islam says. It promotes a single head of state, a talent, whose power is balanced but checked by the Shura system of council, central decision making. Caliphate and Shura is a fair balance, neither tilting too far towards democratic rule of ignorant masses, nor its opposite pole of totalitarian rule of one. An ideal Muslim society is founded upon and operating according to the principles laid out in the Quran and Sunnah and every citizen has a voice and individual rights are staunchly guarded by law. Mr. Kasana quoted some verses from the Quran on this. Every person, Muslim or non-Muslim, has a right to protection of personal safety and property. Islam promotes neither caste nor communist systems neither individualism nor communalism, neither political disengagement nor political anarchy or upheaval. I move on from governance to culture. Over here, the Quran says, and I quote, O mankind, we have created you from male and female and have made your nations and tribes that you may know one another. Lo, the noblest of you in the sight of God are the best in conduct. Lo, God is knower of him. In this verse, the Quran recognizes both cultural differences and racial equality of mankind. In fact, God presents our racial diversity as one of his signs and saying, and I quote, and of his things is the creation of the heavens and the earth and the difference of your languages and colors. Lo, herein are protents of men of understanding. Islam rejects racism, arrogance, racial segregation, racial separatism, racial supremism, racial genocide, racial intolerance, and social caste systems. It acknowledges difference between cultural groups without seeking them to whitewash humanity into a single culture. There were some verses from the Quran which were quoted by Mr. Kasana. I move on to economics. Economically, Islam is neither purely capitalistic nor collectivistic. Islam recognizes the right of an individual for ownership. However, individual ownership is balanced by the right of the poor via the zakat system. So, we come to what the balance is and that is moderation and which is the basic important feature of the Islamic civilization. Islam also combines spirit, materialism with spiritualism or the needs of the soul and the needs of the material. It combines the Sharia sciences and the life sciences. It combines idealism and realism. It strikes a balance between the rights and duties. And I quote,
from Surat e Rahman. Bal balance between these opposites means that each party should be given a scope and should get its right equitably without hyperbole, omission, tyranny or injustice. He has set up the balance in order that you may not transgress the balance, so establish weight with justice and fall not short in the balance. Islam tends to strike a balance between the rights and duties of individuals. Man is not an independent unity of life that is isolated from the rest of the society. Man must live within the circles of society, share benefits and interests, and establish relationships. Civilization of Islam is characterized as such by balance and moderation. And for the combination and balance between the world and the hereafter, perhaps the clearest evidence to mention here are the verses that ordain the Friday prayer. And I quote from Surat al Juma. O you believe, when the call is proclaimed to prayer on Friday, hasten earnestly to the remembrance of Allah and leave off businesses. That is the best for you, if you know that. And when the prayers is finished, then may you disperse through the land and seek the bounty of Allah and celebrate the praises of Allah often so that you may prosper. I spoke about moderation, which is one of the most important features of our religion. Islam does not preach extremism. It does not preach a system whereby you try to enforce your will upon others by force. It does not preach that a Muslim should be a monk and live in a monastery or a worshipper living in an isolated place praying all night and fasting during daytime. Islam has asked Muslims and mankind to work in this world, work for its reconstruction and seek livelihood and peace in it. So in conclusion, I would say that our religion does not see us as flawless nor devilish. It does not see us as doomed. Islam preaches that we are born pure but with free will to choose between good and evil. Every person is liable to make mistakes because it is the weakness which is inherent in all of us. So God has given us the ability to think and to choose the right path, given us guidelines which are there till the day of judgment to follow in the shape of the Quran and the Sunnah. So, the last word which I can say is that one can clearly see that Islam preaches a middle path in 
all aspects of life. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. His Excellency, thank you very much for being with us and uh, sharing. I think it's a um, uh, guidelines for every day of life and there is a from 